I'm batch filming, so I changed my shirt. Welcome to today's video. I'm Autumn, and today we are going to be talking about um, language arts and math subjects for the 2021 school year. Should we do it by grade or should we do it by topic, subject? Mm, I think we should do it by grade. Let's start it with kindergarten. While I gather these materials, you might as well subscribe, hit the like button. Also, it helps out my channel, so that would be really nice. Do that stuff. We got more videos. You should watch the last video where I talk about how and why we homeschool the way that we do. Hold on. You do that while I get this stuff. My goodness, there's so many books. This is just too much. It's just a lot of things, okay? Kindergarten, why you gotta be so dramatic? Why you gotta have all the pieces? All right, do you see this? Do you see this? This is why we presume minimalism because this is why my homeschool advice is minimalism because this is a lot of stuff. This is just for one kid and I could probably buy more. That's for one kid, okay? Get rid of stuff. Clean your house out before you start homeschooling. I'm serious. I'm not joking. This is not a joke. This is not a test. I didn't even go to the gym today, but I feel like it. I have the air conditioner turned off because because it's loud and then you, all you hear is a hum in the video, but G. Willikers, Batman. Now that I've made an utter mess, I'm gonna talk to you guys about how we're choosing to homeschool this year for kindergarten. So, for kindergarten, when it comes to academics, I'm not talking about anything else other than just the like academic knowledge that we put in their brain. I'm a little bit out of breath right now. For language arts, which I kind of tend to think is the most important subject in kindergarten, not for their development, but academically in kindergarten, language arts. Because once again, like I said in the last video, if you can learn to read, you can learn to do anything. You can even learn math if you just learn to read. Reading is like the most powerful subject. For kindergarten, we have chosen Foundations Phonics. Um, now, full disclosure, my kindergartner, my, my current, my next kindergartner, she has been doing homeschool with us since she was two. So she's passively experienced kindergarten twice already because her sisters did kindergarten at home and she was just right there with them, had to be included, had to learn all the things. She's also been doing ABC Mouse for over a year. And man, I didn't think it was really like that useful. I'm like, I'm not really sure they really learned. They learned so much. ABC Mouse, like, listen, you could just include that as a part of your curriculum, seriously. And I think for, it's not very expensive and you can have three kids on there for one price. Yes, so she's been doing ABC Mouse preschool. She's done all about reading preschool. She's done Explo Get Ready for the Code, book A, B, and C. So keep that in mind. This year she's doing Foundations Phonics by Masterbooks. I really have an appreciation for the classical kind of uh, Charlotte Mason branch off of the classical flavor of education. And I feel like Master Books is really good if you're kind of an open and go person, but you also like the Charlotte Mason kind of approach to education, but you want open and go materials. I think Master Books is a really great brand to not have to have a lot of prep, prep work. And most of their workbooks are kind of set up in like one sheet like tear outs where you can, you can literally just give them one front and back worksheet and you can hand it to them and you're like, here is your language arts lesson for today, okay? And their math is, is the same way for the most part. Um, so I really, really like that. That makes it simple because we can literally just open the book and, and go whatever the next lesson is. We open it, we do it, we close it, we're done. Or if you like the binder method where you kind of, um, um, I have a video on this. I can link it in the iCards or if you guys want me to do like a refresher, I can do a new one because I made that video like three or four years ago. But basically, if you do the little binder method, um, you can once a week go through, tear out all their worksheets for that week, and then put divide them by like little pockets. So you have like a pocket for each day of the school week. And you would put all their worksheets for that day in that pocket. And so Master Books is really um, good curriculum to do that with because generally, each like lesson that the kids are gonna do are fully front and back. So you don't have like lesson one on one page and then lesson two on the back page. That is frustrating and annoying if you're trying to do the, like the little binder method. So most of the master books um, curriculums are just kind of like tear out like this. You can tear it out, hand them the worksheet, they're gonna do front and back, and then 
that's it. Um, or there might be two front and backs occasionally, but pretty much, um, yeah. So I really, um, so far have really liked this. We've only done a few lessons so far, but it's just like a basic phonics curriculum. So they're making sure that they understand the letters, but they're not teaching them all the letters and then teaching them to put all the letters together to form words. They're going to teach them a few letters and then form those few letters into words and then teach them a few more letters and form those letters into words. And so they are learning to read words like from the beginning. So I like that. Um, I, I like the way that this works so far. It seems to be really peaceful. It also is, it is a Christian curriculum so there's going to be some kind of Bible lessons tucked in there but literally like my, my daughter and I sit at the table and if that lesson is D um, then I literally just read it read what's on the paper and follow the instructions turn it over we do the activity so there might be some words highlighted that she's supposed to read kind of like um, is it teach your child to read in 100 easy lessons? And then also um, the ordinary parent's guide to reading, I think is what it's called. They're kind of the same way where you're like, you just read the lesson and then it'll have bolded words. And then you have the kids read like the bolded words. So this is kind of like that. And for readers to go along with that, we have Bob books. Of course, my kids took them out of the box. And so I don't know where the blue box is, but then I also got stage two. Um, and so we have these, I feel like Bob books because they're, um, they're just CVC books in the beginning, like CVC words. And then they kind of advance as you go on to, to other sets. So I like these because they're really simple books and they feel encouraged when they're, you know, they're reading, they get through one whole book and they're like, wow, I read a book. So it helps them to read, um, get that satisfaction of reading a book really, really early. So I like thought books. When they're ready to read kind of better stories, I it feels like a more satisfying story than just a Bob book. I like this collection. This is the My First Reading Library. Um, this is from Usborn. This was something that was gifted to us. And I really, really like this book for the same reason that I like the Language Lessons for a Living Education. Same, same methodology here. Um, I like the, these readers because these are co-readers. So basically there's a story and um, the parent reads the small text and then the child reads the, um, the bolded text. So it starts out with them just reading CBC words. Then as they advance through the levels, you can actually go back and have them read the whole entire story um, have them read the whole story to you, including the small text. Um, you could also have them read the story without you just reading the bolded text. So the story will make sense um, just reading the bolded text. It will make sense reading the small uh, and reading the small text and the large text together, if that makes sense. So these are co-readers. So I really like these uh, this collection of readers because they're co-readers. And so once again, I feel like this, this has to do with confidence and I like co-readers because of the flow of the story. I find a lot of times my kids, when they first start reading, um, they spend so much energy trying to read the words that they have no idea what the story is about when they get to the end of it. They have no context of what the story is. And so my husband and I would end up having them they would read the, the words on the page and then we would, after they read the whole page, we would reread it just so that they knew what the story was about because by the time they got to the end of the page, they couldn't tell you what they read because so much of their mental energy just went to figuring out the words. So I like these because it helps them retain the story while also being able to um, to read. So I really like co-readers. If you guys know of any other brands of co-readers or co-reading books like that, where the parent and the child read together, please, please, please let me know. Put it in the comments. Find me on Instagram and send me a message. Um, it's Our Burt Nest. I'm also Autumn Burton or at Keto Fat Camp because uh, that's my um, weight loss Instagram thing. So yes, let me know. I really, really like co-readers. So let's talk math for a minute. 
I've, I've homeschooled two other kids through kindergarten. Every year I get to the end of their homeschool year and think and realize that the next curriculum they're gonna do for first grade is basically like all the same stuff that they just did in kindergarten. So I felt like at the end of their kindergarten year, why did we do this? Why did we do a math curriculum when we really would have been better off just spending our time doing like skip counting songs and just number recognition and math stories. That's a thing now. It's 2020. We have math storybooks, which are awesome. So I kind of wish that I would have just spent their kindergarten year heavily focusing on learning to read and then kind of passively doing math in just a more fun way. So I've got a collection of books here and I can't believe that I'm not using a math curriculum for kindergarten, but I've got all these books some of them I bought um, new this year and some of them we've had. Also, our library does have a few of the bedtime math books. I like them, but I don't know that I wanna use them as a curriculum. So I really like these Math Start books. So these are story books that have a mathematical concept written into the book. I have a few books from levels one, two, and three. I don't think I have a level four here. I also have the guide for level one, and I am pretty sure that I am not gonna end up using it at all. I do not think you need this. This is really designed for teachers and for classrooms. This is not really designed to be used with one individual student. However, in the backs of these books, so you would read the story, and then in the back of the book, there are activities that you can do to practice or to use the concept that you've learned. So this one is Park Safari, and it's a story about finding uh, unknowns or solving for unknowns. It's a level three, 100 days of cool. So this is numbers one through 100. Shark Swimathon, subtracting two digit numbers. Leaping Lizards, Counting by Fives and Tens, Missing Mittens, Odd and Even Numbers, Slugger, Car Wash, Dollars and Cents, Earth Day, Hooray, Place Value. Place Value, man, that can be a hard one for kids to get in kindergarten. So, um, yes. Spunky Monkey on Parade, Counting by Twos, Threes, and fours, monster musical chairs, subtracting one. It's about time, um, telling time to the hour. And this is just a storybook, you guys, it's just a storybook. And so what I've been thinking with math this year, because I have math start books and I have a few other books, like I have this circumference and all the king's tens. Once again, talking about place value, I think that's a hard concept for kindergartners to understand sometimes. Um, I also have some games. These are like little paper um, mailbox math board games. They don't make these anymore. Somebody gave these to me. Um, but basically you can find games like this on like Teachers Pay Teachers and stuff like this. So I have, um, what is this? This is the math one. So kindergarten math games. And then uh, this is the language arts one. So I have a language arts one too that teaches like rhyming words beginning sounds, lowercase letters, um, initial consonant sounds, ending sounds, and short A word family. So that should be in the language arts category. Um, but this is the math one. It's teaching counting sets to 10, counting sets to 20, comparing sets to 20, ordering numbers to 10, comparing numbers to 20, adding sets to 10, adding numbers to 10, subtracting sets to 10, equal parts, telling time to the hour. And that's kind of a lot of what all these books are right here. Another thing that I like to utilize to teach math concepts like um, place value or odds and even numbers or counting or whatever, skip counting especially, YouTube videos, tons and tons of YouTube videos that are songs. So math songs definitely, definitely help um, to kind of drive home those math concepts. And so what I was thinking with the Math Start books, I was thinking kind of like five in a row, you know, with like with five in a row, you, you get a book and you read the same book every day for five days and then you would just do a different activity with that book every day. And so I thought, what if we did that with, um, these math start books for kindergarten, we kind of use the concept of five in a row and we um, just read, 
you know, one week would be math or um, telling time to the hours week. And so we would read this story every day for five days and each day do a, um, let me see, each day just do a different activity from the back. Um, I think that would be, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five activities. I think that would be really cool to do something like that. And um, yeah, that's pretty cool. We also have for Telling Time, I also have this book. There's a lot of books that you can get on Telling Time. Um, so this is called uh, Telling the Time. This It's by Stephen Cartwright. It's an Usborne book. Um, and it's a little, I really like this because they are supposed to move the hands on the clock as um, they go through the book and as they go through the day. So this is telling time, I believe, to the hour. I don't know. Mm, this might be to the half hour. But yeah, telling time to the hour. Um, I like this book. This is really cute. And I like that it's hands on too. So it kind of helps them get an understanding of how... Uh, time progresses throughout the day. When it comes to initial like counting and number recognition, I like these books. Um, I think these were gifted to us a long time ago. Um, this one is uh, the Usborne Big Book of Numbers. I used it this morning preschool. I really think that she might even be a little too old for this. She's five and I I don't know, we might not even use this. This might be a little too preschool for her, but basically it's a number and then you kind of just read stuff about that number every day. Probably not gonna use that one. But this one, which has, is well-loved to the point that the spine has ripped and the cover's coming off. This is Usborne Count to 100. And I did like using this book to teach my kids number recognition to 100. So colorful pictures, you guys, I'm all about some colorful pictures. Once again, I do not sell Usborne books, but I do think that they make fantastic colorful resources. Um, like I said in my last video, I don't like colorful resources pasted all over the walls, but I do love them in a book. So um, like 70 pretty flowers. So we're going to count to 70. And then the next day we have 80 swirling leaves. So we're going to count to 80. And so just using it like just, you know, every day maybe um, for several days or for a couple weeks. Um, yeah, a hundred stars. So there's all these little reflective stars all over the place. And yeah, and then the cover just ripped off. So that's great. I also have this resource that I can use. Um, I think my mother-in-law gave me this. It's called Usborne First Illustrated Math Dictionary. And so it just has, it explains um, different math concepts. So just Every page, it's just um, a progression of math concepts. You could probably use this as a curriculum. I don't know how practical it is to just sit there, open it up, and just start reading. Um, you could do that. You could kind of treat it like, you know, uh, uh, teach your child to read 100 e easy lessons, how you just kind of open it and you start reading. You could probably use this kind of like that, but for math, um, I, I think I like this book if I'm trying to teach a... Um, a concept, I like to have something like this so that I can reference it and go, oh, okay, well, maybe I can teach it like that. I, I like to do that. I also have uh, Matthew C. Alpha Teacher's Guide. And so sometimes if I'm trying to teach something, I'll go reference another teacher's guide and see how they teach it. And then I'll go, oh, okay, well, then that, that makes sense to me. And then I can kind of figure it out on my own after that. So, yeah, I, I like this just as like a, a reference, especially since we're not using a kindergarten, like a real kindergarten math curriculum this year. Okay. Oh, and I also have these to go with the um, math start with the Math Start books, um, because a lot of the activities in the backs of the book and in the guide use these types of little counter things. So I got a bag of these just to make it easier. But I do have the Math UC manipulatives as well. So we can use these and we can also use those. So lastly, I have um, Life of Fred apples and also butterflies. Um, I really think that I, I don't, I have this, so I wanted to show it to you, but I really feel like this is more appropriate for like kinder, uh, first grade. I really want my kids to be able to have decent handwriting and to be able to write all their numbers before they start this because this doesn't really have workbooks. It's really meant to be like 
a pen and paper, like scratch paper kind of curriculum. I do like it. It is story based. I'm a big fan of that. My kids really like reading this. Um, and you would do Life of Fred, read like a chapter of Life of Fred two, three times a week and then do the activities at the end of each chapter. Um, and then maybe you could uh, pair that with some YouTube videos about that concept. Um, I like Life of, Life of Fred. It's about like a five-year-old genius that teaches at a college called Kittens University and just about all the things that happen in his life. And um, yeah, it's a quirky, weird uh, math story that goes on. I mean, they've got books all the way through college age um, math and they do have some a language arts curriculum that I've never actually seen. But um, yeah, Life of Fred. I, I like it. I, first grade, not kindergarten. I'm not a I don't, I don't think you should use this for kindergarten, but I have it and I don't have a first grader this year, but I thought I would show it to you anyways. So those are the materials that I'm going to be using to teach language arts and math to my kindergartner this year. This um, video might be split into two parts as well um, because now I've recorded now for 24 minutes, but I'm gonna stop this and start the next part and we'll see what happens. So those are the materials that I am using for my kindergartner for the 2020-2021 um, school year. And um, when we, I, I'll show you guys um, the history and science curriculum and Bible stuff um, that she's going to be, we're going to be using with her when we do our video on family subjects. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps my channel. And if you want to see any future videos, make sure that you subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.